The Word Defibrillator for today, where we trust in God for a word from within the Word. Now, as I was starting off with this, I really wanted to tell you something. And then setting it up, realized there was something else within this uh, chapter that I wanted to tell you too. So it's going to be kind of like a reverse. And I'm going to use the second one to explain how you can make it through the first one. So I'll give you the message and then the understanding as to how we can get through it. Okay. So this is Jesus speaking to the disciples and he says, I'm going to be going now that time has come. And the disciples are really trying to figure out what do you mean? Uh, you are speaking plainly to us and not in parables. Now we know you are uh, acquainted with um, everything and have no need to be asked questions because of this we believe that you came from God. And so they're having this long discussion and it's in John 16 around verse 32. So let's say 31, Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Do you believe it at last that I came from God? Okay. Then he goes in and he says, um, but take notice, the hour is coming and it has arrived when you will all be dispersed and scattered, every man to his own home, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. So this is Jesus' comfort that irrespective of what people are doing to us, for us, against us, Father is always there. That's our primary relationship, and that will never disappear. He'll never leave us nor forsake us, whether we've given our lives to Christ or not, whether we are doing good or bad, it is His goodness that leads us to repentance. So the Father is there. Then he says in verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. Do you relate to that? Do we have tribulations and trials? So speaking to a friend of mine, they are blessing somebody and they're helping their, their lives be set up technology-wise. And in this whole thing, there's this massive confusion and this whole relationship blows up and there's tears and anger and everything going on and here you are you are money on business you're trying to bless somebody and then everything goes wrong that's what happens to us you wake up in the morning thinking oh it's going to be such a beautiful day we make a declaration this is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it and then one thing comes along and it comes to wobble us and as I always say is, is that life's never going to get better. It doesn't get better. We get better. And tribulations and trials. A trial is a testing. Testing of your faith. Testing of your durability. Testing of how good you are at what you're doing. Testing to prepare you. And are you ready for what lays before you? So trials will always be there and always are necessary. You have soccer trials, you have netball trials, you have sports trials to see is this person ready for the big leagues? Because A, you still want to win a game, but can they handle it personally? And how will it, um, how will it work out for them as a person? Sometimes fame is not a good idea for some people. They just can't handle it. And God's not going to put you in a position that you cannot handle so I have told you these things, verse 33, and that's John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But, and remember what a but is, that just totally negates everything that's just been before it. And but be of good cheer. Why on earth would I be of good cheer when I'm going through tribulation and trials and distress? Forget about the frustration. That's enough for me. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted. Undaunted means do not wobble. Do not lose focus. Just carry on carrying on. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. You see, we might have an enemy by name, but in reality there is no enemy. 
because Jesus has already conquered it. We just have to walk in that what he has already established for us. And that's where we're going to find our peace. That's where we're going to find our confidence. He's saying, listen, when you're going to trust in your eyes based on your experience in your past, you're going to feel you're not going to make this. A lot of you are just going to bail out and just walk away. But be of, of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, and undaunted. For I have overcome the world. He's not saying I will. I mean, this is before he's even going to the cross. He's saying, I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. This is before his crucifixion. That's a very good question as to how. But there he's saying, I have. So chill. Even though you're going to be scattered, even though there's going to be chaos in your life, be at peace. And very, very important is what I'm going to share with you next because in verse 21, while he's explaining this to the guys and saying, listen, it's going to be tough. This is going to be a hard moment. He uses an explanation. And in this word picture, you go, oh, of course, especially for mothers, you can understand it. He says this, a woman, when she gives birth, this is verse 21, to a child has grief, anguish, agony. Ask any husband who has stood by his wife. Very seldom is she going, oh, I really love you. I'm so glad I'm giving birth to this baby. No, it really becomes scary. They scream, they shout, they swear, they threaten life and death. And just listen to what it says. A woman, when she gives birth to a child, has grief, anguish, agony because her time has come. It's not an easy thing. Here's Jesus' time has come for him to go to the cross. And you know how he sweated blood in that, that fear and that anguish. I don't know if I can really do this. But again, Father, if it's your will, then it's going to be done. I know I don't have to trust in me. I'm trusting in you. He says, listen, through all this, I know I'm going to be alone, but I have the Father. So a woman, when she gives birth to a child, has grief, anguish, agony, because her time has come. But, there we go again, when she has delivered the child, she no longer remembers her pain, trouble, anguish. Because she is so glad that a man, a child, a human being, has been born into the world. So yeah, giving birth to what you're going through at this moment in time is tough and hard. Anguish and agony. <sighs> but when that comes forth, that what God is doing in your life, you're going to forget it all. She forgets it all. And be of good cheer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Father, that we are of good cheer. We take courage and are confident and certain and undaunted for you, Lord Jesus, have overcome the world. You have deprived it of power to harm us and have conquered it for us. We know that irrespective of what happens here on earth, we live for eternity in Christ. We thank you for this, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have told us these things so that in you we may have perfect peace and confidence. We thank you for this, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.